It seems like every time economists, especially those who write textbooks, try to explain costs, it starts getting pretty confusing. One of the areas that's confusing to a lot of students is to look at the tables of costs that are calculated and understand how those calculations are made as well as what do they mean. So we're going to spend a few minutes looking at a sample cost table, uh, just a partial table, and look at how the calculations are made. Okay. Now in this particular instance, look what we've got in the beginning. Total fixed costs are $600. Remember that. That's, that's an element of what we're going to be doing. The fixed costs of operating this, this factory are $600 per time period. What we want to look at then in the first column is as our output increases from 1 to 2 to 3 and on up, as our output increases in number of units produced, what's going to happen to our various costs? Well, the first cost we've already got, fixed costs. Let's look at the second element of costs, the variable costs. These will be the total variable costs at each increased level of output. Then we'll look at the total costs overall, that is the variable plus the fixed costs added together. Once we've got those, we'll, we'll draw some conclusions. So at an output level of 1, we are told, this is a given, that our total variable costs are $100. Therefore, our total costs are fixed plus variable costs, 600 plus 100. That's our $700. Now look what happens as we increase output. When we go to two units of output, our total variable costs have gone up $50. So now they're 150 Our total costs then are variable of 150 plus fixed of 600 So we have total costs of 750 you Are you tracking with me OK? Be sure you are. If not, go back and listen to that again. Let's, let's continue the progression here. At three units of output, we measure our total variable costs. They have grown from $150 to $210. What's going to be our total costs? Right, $600 in fixed plus $210 in variable, $810. When we go to four, four units of output, we see that our total variable costs increase to $280. Adding that to $600, we see our total costs at four units of output. $880. And the last one, let's wrap it up. Our variable costs when we produce five units have gone to $360. Adding that to the $600, we see our total costs at five units of output, $960. Okay, make sure you're following the logic of that and uh, you know keep an eye on, on what happens to these costs as we go along. Now these have been total costs. What we're really interested in is going to be our costs per unit as we increase output. What's going to happen to our cost per unit? Now you may recall from whatever reading you've done that in the initial stages of production typically our cost per unit decreases. This is the range called economies of scale. We are able to produce more units more cheaply for each one. Because of what? Well first thing is we're learning what we're doing. We're getting better at what we're doing. We've got a learning curve involved, so we become more efficient and so we're able to produce more goods at a lower cost. Second thing, our fixed costs, $600 in this case, are going to be spread out over more units. What's the fixed cost per unit if you only produce one unit? Well, it's $600. But if you're producing five units, what's the fixed cost per unit? Well, that's $600 divided among five units. That's only $120 in per unit fixed costs. So the more units you produce, the more you're able to spread your fixed costs among a larger range of production. So again, your cost per unit in that sense is going down. What else can go on? As you increase the production in your factory, you're buying your raw materials in larger quantities. So maybe you can get better prices on bulk purchases. Instead of buying a gallon of paint, you buy five gallons of paint at a time and you get a cheaper price per gallon because you're buying it in larger quantities. These sorts of behaviors help us, at least in the initial stages of production, to reduce our cost per unit. But let's look now at the cost per unit the way we calculate it and let's, let's go through it very, very carefully here. Average fixed cost, we just talked about that. That's the total fixed cost divided by the number of units you produce. What do we get? 600 divided by 1 is $600 per unit. When you're only producing one unit, you've got to pay all of your costs 
with just that one unit. But if you increase your production to two units, then you can spread your fixed costs among two units instead of one, and so each unit needs to account for $300 worth of fixed costs, and so forth. We get our fixed costs declining because we're spreading the fixed cost of 600 among more units of output. If it helps, take a look at this. Here's the quick calculation. Total fixed cost divided by output or Q, the quantity. So the average fixed cost continually falls all the way through. In most of our graphs, we won't be drawing that curve, but we will be representing it as the distance between average variable cost and average total cost. If that's a little confusing, uh, come back and listen to it later, but it'll become clear. Next column, average variable cost. How do we calculate that? We take the total variable cost, that's over in that second column, and we divide that by the number of units produced, Q. So in the first case, we have $100 in total variable cost. Divided by one unit is 100. In the second case, we have $150 total variable cost. Divided by two units, that's $75. Next, we have 210 divided by 3. We have 280 divided by 4. And we have 360 divided by 5. So I want you to be clear on how we calculate these numbers. I'm not worried about the pattern to them yet. Uh, we may look very quickly. What happened to total, uh, sorry, average variable cost? Well, it declined, and it declined, and then it stayed the same. And then, at the fifth unit of output, it began to increase. What we have described right there is the bottom of that U-shaped average variable cost curve. Again, if that's not clear, it should become clear when you look at the graphs. Uh, to revisit this, here's our calculations. All right. Last or next to the last column, very important column here, right? Average total cost. So another way to say that is my cost per unit of output on the average. The average unit cost me how much? And we calculate that by taking our total costs, that was our third column over there, and dividing that among the number of units of output. So what do we have? Total cost of 700 divided by one unit? Well, $700. Then we have, what, $750 in total costs divided by two units, 375, and so forth. 810 divided by 3, 880 divided by 4, and 960 divided by 5. Again, here's the calculations if you want to take a close look at those. I would tell you you need to be able to fill out these cost tables on your own. Uh, many times questions will give you the basic information. They may give you the total fixed cost and the total variable cost of, at various levels of output and say, hey, fill in the rest of the table. Be prepared to do that. Our last column, and again, very, very important information, is the marginal cost column. What is marginal cost? Marginal means extra or additional cost for producing, in this case, one more unit. All right? So when we had no output, we had uh, only fixed cost, but when we added one unit of output, our total cost increased $100. So the extra cost to the company for producing the first unit was the change in total variable costs, or $100. Now look at the second iteration, because the, the pattern here should become clear. When I go from one unit to two units of output, what happened? Did my fixed costs change? No, they're fixed. But my variable costs went from 100 to $150. So the extra cost to my company of producing the second unit was the extra $50 in variable costs. One more time, OK? What happens when we go to three units of output? Did our fixed costs change? No, they are fixed. Hello, Moose Breath. Pay attention, right? But what happened to our variable costs? They went from 150 to 210 They increased by $60. So the extra cost of the third unit was the extra $60 in variable costs. Now what you can see here is that the marginal cost is in fact the change in total variable costs every time you increase output. Now, just for the heck of it, it is also the change in total costs as you increase output. Because the change in total costs is only coming from the change in 
variable costs. You want to listen to that a couple of times and make sure it's straight. It's fine, no problem. It's a little confusing the first few times you see it. What happens when we go to four units of output? Well, our fixed costs don't change. Good. But our variable costs go from 210 to 280, so they increase by $70. Said another way, our total cost increased from 810 to 880. That was that $70 increase in costs for producing the fourth unit. Now you tell me, what's the marginal cost of the fifth unit? 280 to 360, $80. All right. Where does this come from? The marginal cost is the change in the variable cost. It's also the change in the total cost. Now that's the way these numbers are calculated in the tables. Your textbooks typically will have a much more complete table, but I would urge you to go through those tables, go through any exercises on them, and be ready to calculate the changes or the data that goes into each of the cells of that table. Alrighty, thank you.